now that maybe you've seen the connection between that and the corruption of the profiteering, you want to kind of reconsider that statement? So my name is Anna. I'm from Madison, Wisconsin. I'm here celebrating my friend's 50th birthday. <laughs> you know, you're, you're committing an act of civil disobedience right now. Did you know that? What do you mean? You're standing very close to me. I actually, actually I really, I know, I love it. I love it. I love it. No, she's, this is someone who's not afraid. I'm a Your rebel. friend's like, yeah, she's not afraid, I'm is she? So no, normally, like, this is, when I come out and do man on street interviews, I have to tell her, all right, you got to put your foot here and don't move. And you're, you're like, let's do this. I own it. What can I say? <laughs> yeah, well, well, you're here in Vegas. You having a good time so far? Yes. Yeah. Everything here is very beautiful, very eye-catching. The people here are very entertaining. <laughs> More so outside without masks than inside, though, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. How, how's that been? You, you, I mean, you put on a mask to go into, to go into casinos and stuff here? Of course. Of it's course. It's all required. Yep, yeah. it's all required. I mean, it's very different in Madison. We have masks uh, very more mandated over there uh, uh, than here in Vegas. I've noticed you guys are a little more lax, but probably just different, you know, regions of the country. So Madison kind of goes with being a very liberal, progressive city that they're very deep into COVID, right? Yes. Yes, we are probably top notch with our COVID <laughs> coverage. Top notch. Yeah, you say, you say top notch. It sounds like uh, what? Well, well, I mean, do you, do you, obviously, you are not afraid. No. But a lot of this, when we say top notch, it's sort of based on we have something very dangerous we should be afraid of, right? Yeah. Well, Madison is very well known for their medical hospitals, teaching hospitals over there, and so for us, we get a lot of one-on-one -on -one information of everything that comes out about COVID. Wait, so it's you guys who are responsible for all the national health problems, like no, cancer no, and no, heart attacks and stroke and diabetes. Doctors. And we have a lot of great doctors that come out of Madison. So, well, you seem to to, to be not afraid of COVID. Why not? Um, it's not that I'm not afraid of it. It's I educate myself to try to make very intelligent, um, solid decisions. You know, I try to read a lot about on it. I try to see different interviews and see different perspectives from doctors, you know. So you've come to your own uh, evaluation of how much of a threat it is. Well, yeah, because as people, we need to decide, you know, what's best for not only us, but for our families and our friends and our coworkers. And it's good to always make an educated decision instead of following the crowd, because sometimes you may be following the crowd off a cliff. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, that's beautiful. So there's two, two ways I want to go with this. One is uh, if uh, I'm sorry, that's just like, like just a beautiful what you said. Uh, but if, uh, if if this is not so much of a threat that you're like actively afraid of it, but they've got all this hype. And this hysteria, and that, what does that tell you? Well, that's the difference between the in, the uh, intelligent individual and the ignorance of people as a whole. So, I mean, I had a professor in college tell me one, said um, the individual is intelligent, but people as a whole can be ignorant. And it's true. I mean, if you scare people enough into something, they'll believe it without questions asked, n no authority, you know, everything. It's like, okay, we're going to do this because you said that it, what, it is what it is. But the intelligent person will stop and say, well, why are we doing this? What, what is the meanings behind this? Show me your proof. Show me the evidence. So, like, so when you said that people have to be able to figure out for themselves what risks mm -hmm. exist in the world around them and then evaluate and make decisions based on those risks for themselves what is the effect when government steps in and says we're gonna make those decisions for you you're gonna have to wear a mask here and here and get this vaccine here or you can't work there now that decision to evaluate those risks is being taken away from those individuals and being forced on everyone in blanket policy by government what's the effect of that well, then that's when you have to back up and say, okay, well, I'm just one person, but then there's a whole public that you have to also be courteous to, you know, because one person can make the difference, but one person can also be the tipping of the scale, too. But you know, you know, but you know this is exaggerated, right? Well, it can, yes and no. I mean, it can be exaggerated to the point to feed fear, 
you know, kind of pouring gas onto the fire. Right. But then again, that's why I say you use your intelligence, you know, use the potato that God gave you. <laughs> well, so <laughs> let, let, let me see if we can make a connection here between a couple seemingly disparate ideas, because when government has the ability that you want it to have seemingly to make these decisions in certain circumstances and that choice is taken away. I mean, in America, like, we have really good government, right? Our politicians are, are always honest and they never lie <laughs> and they, they tell the truth. And so we can always trust them. They, like, they're never corrupt. You know, they don't take kickbacks from corporations or, or like, make, do insider trading or make decisions that would profit them or their family or, or nepotism, hiring family. Like, they don't do stuff like that, right? Yeah, so we can trust like them. cheese on my burger. So, yeah, no. Nah. <laughs> so we can, and I, and, and I like ketchup on my hot dogs. So, but you, <laughs> so you can trust them to make these risk decisions for the whole society, right? And there's not going to be any bad consequences? No. Uh, not truly and honestly. I mean, well, that's the one thing about Madison. If you know anything about us Madisonians, we are very... I know enough I don't want to live there. Yeah, well, hey, that's to each their own, all right? Like, I, all I know is I've been in Madison for 15 years, and we're very passionate about our politics, and we're very passionate about our badgers. So yeah. Cheese, snow, football, and really happy people. But there's also a dangerous streak of uh, of, of pro-government attitude in Wisconsin that is manifest in a particularly dangerous way right now with COVID. Because, I mean, how are billionaires doing in the last year and a half? Well, I have noticed that a lot of industries are pocketing from this whole fear that yeah. they're feeding into yeah. society, which is really sad because there are quite a few families that can't afford what uh, another maybe two parent home or two income home family can afford. And you know, and it's really scary because those people that don't take the time to sit there and really read through the information or the evidence that's being put out there, and then they just listen to the hype that everybody else is putting out there because they're speaking from a place of fear and not really of intelligence or truth you know they don't have the the means or the funding to really yeah. go out there and do what they need to do and it's got to be really frustrating right now seeing generally speaking i mean you're in vegas you're doing okay yeah. but very few americans worth less than a billion dollars are doing better now than they were a year and a half ago and so maybe they've tricked you into thinking that they should have the authority to make those risk evaluation decisions for the population as opposed to maybe if everybody had the ability to make those decisions for themselves we could collectively come to a better consensus through voluntary cooperation rather than stuff being forced on people because it seems like you have a problem with that too right the the coercion the the the, the mandates well, and I, I guess it also comes from the fact that I come from a heavily military family. So I'm sorry to hear that. I've seen the sacrifices that my brothers, my dad have put, you know, my friends and family have put to serve for this country, which I love that about them. You know, they, well, they go out there and they do what they feel is right. Yeah, so, so they, I, I was in the military myself. So I've, I'm not I'm not making fun of from 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 a you know a not guilty position here myself, and I, to say that we were serving the country seems silly at this point, because we were serving bankers and politicians and war profiteers. We were serving government. We we're following. I mean, because if you think that joining the U.S. military is serving your country, then it's only true to the extent that politicians are honest. This at best, true. at best, this and I would say true. it's actually worse than that, from my experience and from my understanding of what the military represents. Seeing the, the global war on terror end with Afghanistan, I am very concerned that we might end up with a 20-year a war on COVID when they told us two weeks to flatten the curve. Oh. And now, you're right, that, that should destroy their credibility in all of this entirely, right? <laughs> and now it's two years, and the rich get richer, and everybody else is suffering. So if I may paraphrase you, it sounded like earlier you said, we do need to have government make some of these risk decisions. Now that maybe you've seen the connection between that and the corruption and the profiteering, you want to kind of reconsider that statement? Well, like I said, you know, if we put honest people in office, then we can have a little more comfort and they'll be able to sleep at night better because they're making solid decisions for their people. But Sounds then, like we need a lot less offices because we don't have that many honest politicians in this country. <laughs> well, you never know. Hey. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for your You're time welcome. and sharing your perspective. You. I appreciate have it. Fearless. Time. Love it.
We will meet that challenge with courage and love, and as always, we the people will prevail!